Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back for joining us uh, for our ongoing search for human humane architecture here on our islands of Hawaii in uh, our progressive paradise, I would say. But uh, progressive paradise needs exotic entrepreneurs. And we had plenty of them uh, mid-century. And we have one of them today here. And he is uh, genetically and was uh, brought up uh, in, in China came to the United States in 1948 and then uh, got educated there and then came here in 1960 with, uh, there's some interesting numbers, with $2,000 and three children. And his name is Peter Shi. Hi, Peter. Thank you very much for being here with us today. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it. it. I, I really, really much, do. Yeah. And um, if we can get the first picture, uh, we had the chance to actually uh, listen to your work a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And we, I'm speaking as a founding board member of Dokomomo right. Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And so I'm speaking on behalf of my board members mm -hmm. and our members and mm -hmm. our guests. And we call this talk story. Mm -hmm. And I particularly want to thank Don Hibbert, you can see here next to you on mm -hmm. that picture, mm -hmm. who basically was doing a scavenger hunt for mm -hmm. the uh, great buildings you have done and which are still around. And so um, the picture you see on that picture there is actually, if we can get the next uh, view here, this is a rendering uh, of a building that um, I wish I would have known you already at the point when we were showing that, mm -hmm. because which mm -hmm. building is that, Peter? The first one is the uh, uh, it's a Magellan condominium. Mm -hmm. and, okay, uh, uh, and this one here? Oh, the first, this one is a Gobon building. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's the Gobon building, and this is a rendering from uh, the original phase. And if we can get the next shot here, we already ran a show about it, which we called um, Exotic Corbu Bracelet together with DeSoto Brown. Mm -hmm. And we did it because I was outraged when I saw what happened to the building uh, recently. And at the bottom right, you can see the original condition, how you designed it. And at the top right, you can see the rendering of the retrofit. And the next picture uh, shows um, me driving by, and I, I found this shot, you know, sort of remark made me think. You saw locals in the back of a pickup truck, which is still amazing that you're allowed to do that. You saw a construction fence with some man ray and uh, sea animals, you know, in there. So all is about the ocean and the natural environment. But then what they did to the building is sort of the opposite. They turned into uh, something that uh, pretty much was you introduced these vertical fins. They were to some extent shading the building. They turned this into a thermal mass, which is a no-go by adding these these glass corners to the building. Right. And I thought to myself, you know, why would you do that? And we had this really interesting discussions that maybe we share with the audience mm -hmm. that you had about your philosophy of purity mm -hmm. and integrity and skins and mm -hmm. makeup. Mm -hmm. Want to share that? Yes, I think the building itself, just like our people's face, if you want to change your face, that become a different person. Because the building, if you want to enhance it, you can do certain things, but the spirit of the building can be still maintained. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good way. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's... And, and this is then shown next picture by as if we would have known you. This is his DeSoto and I. We must have sensed that you think that way because this is us trying to explain with a simple, almost like science class, uh -huh. little uh, uh, demonstration here that what you see in brown, the cardboard on the top right picture, we try to simulate what they did to the building and taking these hideous metal bands, they're doing nothing but ornating the building. We will get to how much you're against ornating the building. Mm -hmm. And we said, what if you take, and I allow myself to say as a practicing architect, if you take all the money they use to basically pimp the building and use it in an in essential way and basically bracket the existing fins and enhancing them and making them deeper mm -hmm. with some metal. And I found this interesting product and in, it's a German metal manufacturer that has a tickle gold. So alluding to the gold bond building, you could have made this with gold anodized sort of sheets of metal 
you would have enhanced uh, the, the building and, and kept its original integrity, right? I totally agree because enhancement is much better than change face. Absolutely. In other words, uh, if a building has its own character, if you enhance it, this is like a natural process. Mm -hmm. It makes more sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. If you want more shade, you enhance it with the same thing except extend it out yeah, instead yeah. of paint it differently. Yeah, or, Before or, the glass was black, now I see it blue. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So makes little to no sense, but you know, on the way here, when we were uh, convoying here yeah. to the show and yeah. I pointed out to it, I was thinking, you know, uh -huh. different to Steve Owl's work, who unfortunately the Ward Center and, and Ward Plaza, uh -huh. which gets torn down. Right. In this case, I thought as bad as it is, but luckily, you can still take these pimples off later on. You can reverse that process, right? So that's, the building has is, is been kept, and what they put on, you can take away again. And I hope at You're some correct. point people, mm -hmm. maybe through the show, we educate people and say, go back to the to its original beauty, right? Right. So, Each person sees the beauty differently. Exactly. But their consistency is more important somehow. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the next picture is also, we thought about your building um, in another show that DeSoto and I did. If we can get the next, yeah, this picture here. That was our, our first show this year. We called it mm -hmm. uh, PPPP, the Post Petroleum People's Parking Plinths. And it had this very sort of out there vision of if we would go back to public transportation fully here, we could solve the housing crisis by basically housing all the people which in which right. formerly were parking mm -hmm. garages. Right. And I found it totally elegant how mm -hmm. you, in an integrated way, incorporated the parking, mm -hmm. which is almost unnoticeable. So here, the middle floors is actually the parking. If you look closer, you can see there's no glass, but additional mm -hmm. railing. With louvers. Yeah. So the ventilation, natural yeah. ventilation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what an elegant way, you know, and again, at the very bottom left is these additional hideous ribbons, which never mind, you mm -hmm. know, I would cover this up. And the rest is, right. is still the clean way you designed it. Mm -hmm. But the actual beauty, this goes with your philosophy, this building has inner values. So we will go to these, the next picture, and explain yeah. us what that is here. What is that? This is a speed ramp. It's a, like a spiral. You go from eighth floor all the way downstairs, just continue to drive down. Wow. But when you drive up, you only go to from zero ground floor to the first floor. You keep on winding, mm -hmm. you find your own parking. Mm -hmm. So the parking is really one way parking, 60, degree, 60 yeah. degrees parking. See? But and you come down, you can go very fast yeah. all the way down. And, and some, I mean, this was the first one of that kind on the island, right? It's the first one of the kind. And then other people were copying you. Reminds me of the Macy's next door, which is now Walmart. It's a, also the uh, MFAC building. Exactly. Yeah. But but the one, the Walmart, which is now downtown Walmart, right. doesn't have a courtyard. So, you know, you get all the fumes and the exhaust. That's right. So this is a naturally ventilated, yeah. which makes a lot of sense, right? The courtyard will be between the parking and the office building in the front. It, it, it's it, an airspace. Exactly. Yeah. And talking like airspace and, you know, this title of the show, Human Humane Architecture, mm -hmm. also people like air. So That's we get correct. to the next picture. You also provided this, mm -hmm. right? Inside is like a garden. The plants on the, on the second level and all the way to the rooftop. Mm -hmm. So it is airspace. So people can live in the office, work in the office, and on the back of it is just open, open air. Yeah. Yeah. So it's got this nice tropical, exotic, it got plants, it got flowers, it's right. just beautiful. Mm -hmm. So once again, it's this mid-century mindset mm -hmm. that you say the building, you know, doesn't want to impress too much on the outside, right. but mm -hmm. it wants to pleasantly surprise you on the inside. That's correct. Which in these days, I don't want to get to politics, uh -huh. but, you know, our current president, you know, mm -hmm. is doing the opposite. It's all about show, right? But right. then when you look closer, mm -hmm. There's hardly any value and there's no core, which, you know, you right. were so perfectly demonstrating mm -hmm. it the opposite way. Mm -hmm. So um, we go, we stay with the same typology of office space and we go to another building you designed uh, in Chinatown. Can we get the next picture? Which is that building, Peter? That's the uh, CQ Yiha building, Yiha Plaza, mm -hmm. uh, designed in 1960. Mm -hmm. And that's the first building using the uh, structural steel mm -hmm. and curtain wall. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and all the white one at that time was white marble chips. Mm -hmm. And also the bottom of it 
it's uh, the column is white marble mm -hmm. laid on the painted red with the dragon and all. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. But I, I have, we, at the end, I have a positive surprise for you, Peter. Wait for that one okay. to that regard. Uh -huh. let's, let's bring the next picture up. Uh, and let's talk a bit, little bit about that sort of very sort of vernacular theme mm -hmm. of that all the buildings in Chinatown have these have these awnings, mm -hmm. which is very nice because you can you know walk shaded and and dry from rain. And explain a little bit about this technology you were building this. Usually the roof, if you go straight forward, it's not elegant enough. Usually the corner turn up one to three ratio. Mm -hmm one up and three horizontal. Mm -hmm. So that means more elegantly tilted. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole roof structure is uh, dome construction. Mm -hmm. There's a plastic, plastic dome you put underneath of it. In order to remove the plastic, there's an air hose. You blow the compressed air, and then the foam will fall off. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we did it. Instead of solid concrete, it's just like a two-way joist construction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Waffles. And the, these two pictures I took in the picture on the right, I remember when Don was giving me and my emerging colleagues a tour of Chinatown, he explained very passionately that the picture on the right is actually a different building. It's the other end of the block of, of the building on the left side. And you told me you intended them to grow together, which yeah. never really happened, right? The, the building originally owned by the CQE hub. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, intention is when they torn down the uh, building in between they can link the two yeah. together yeah but somehow they never did yeah so there's two parts of it mm -hmm. but the same motif uh, come yeah. out mm -hmm. and the building on the right is that is that one that is closer to the ever side of chinatown on the on that block end and also don told me that it was originally which we like to call easy breezy it was open and naturally ventilated and then they enclosed it at some point unfortunately again you can reverse that you can you know That's almost good. i mean this is going up for being on the historic register soon so then you should yeah. actually take the glass away and get it back to its original idea that's correct and it's an amazing for me it's an amazing mm -hmm. blend between your two cultures mm -hmm. uh you know the american curtain wall uh and then uh the the canopy coming from your asian chinese culture mm -hmm. And, and blending the two, right, in a refreshing, uh, right. innovative way. Mm -hmm. That's uh, amazing. Mm -hmm. and, and at this point, I think we should introduce that uh, when the audience paid attention to your title, you were uh, educated and trained as an engineer. And then on the side, you said, but maybe I can pass this architectural exam. And you did. And from there on, you were an architect, right? I started out as a civil engineer. Mm -hmm. And then when I studied at Michigan, I said, well, why don't I study structural? Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, I like architecture the best. Mm. I asked my friends, what kind of book do you study? Yeah. So I uh, went to Detroit, rented the, a room, Holiday Inn for two weeks, mm -hmm. and study all the books. They, they recommend it mm -hmm. and pass the exam. There you go. So become architect afterwards. And then, mm -hmm. and then the next picture is you were provoking once again and entrepreneuring in a creative way because then you bought a piece of land and said, why can't I develop this? And with that, you were a pioneer in the condo, in the culture of condominiums here on the island, right? And this is this project. That was 1969. At that time, AIA had a rule. No architect shall be a a builder yeah. or developer. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, they did change the rule. There you go. But I did not read the architecture <laughs> bylaw too carefully. Good for you. And then, so I developed this Magellan condominium. Yeah. It was 75 units, two mm -hmm. bedroom, two baths. Mm -hmm. As imagine, I sold it at that time, leasehold, mm -hmm. $39,000. Wow. And later on, the fee is 100000 mm -hmm, So mm -hmm. now it's worth about 450000 mm -hmm. each yeah. unit. Yeah. Two bedroom, two bath yeah. unit with a balcony. And awesome. All. And mm -hmm. talking balcony, I mean, whereas developers these days, they come from profit and, and commerce, whereas you, you know, came from a cultural approach because you cared for the people who would live in there. And uh, the right little picture, the tall one, is one that I took of you at the talk story. And explain to us what you were pointing out at. I pointed out the the balcony. The balcony is actually, it's a with curvilinear. It's like a 
quarter of the circle. Mm -hmm. The reason I did it is because if you're on one uh, balcony and it give you the privacy, you're not connected with another balcony. Mm -hmm. The balcony itself is concrete curb coming up. If you lie down on the easy chair or on the couch, mm -hmm. nobody can see you. Mm -hmm. It's totally private. Mm -hmm. That's the reason I have the curvature, yeah. separate yeah. two balcony and not together. So once again, it's, it's not add-on ornamentation. It's it, very strategically engineered you know, human humane comfort, right? It's that part of a relief. So the balcony sort of separate and yet more elegantly put together. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And next picture is you also went per not pioneering because our island is facing growth and our, you know, we can't build more, we can't sprawl more. You, so right. you were sort of investigating in, in going taller. So yeah. there's this tower here, right? Yeah. At that time, the uh, Salt Lake area have a zoning you cannot go over 320 feet. Mm -hmm. So I felt if you can go 325 feet, you can have less footprint on the ground. Mm -hmm. So we designed a twin tower, and uh, so the whole thing rise 40 story high. Yeah. At that time, only maximum height is 320. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is 320 mm -hmm. feet. And there's yeah. you were you were creating maximum comfort because uh, two units share one elevator, so it's almost like you have your private elevator. Right? Uh, two units share two elevators. Oh, oh wow! So mm -hmm. one unit have one elevator. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh, totally private. And then also, um, even though you live very you know compacted and condensed and waste the least of land, you have. 100% privacy because they're staggered, right? So you never look into your neighbor's You never space. look, yeah, never look at each other. Mm -hmm. And yet you can see the, the view of the Salt Lake. Mm -hmm. And because the building is so skinny and tall, mm -hmm. you have more uh, land on the ground. Yeah. There's more recreation area on the ground. I, yeah. Activity room and all kind of Things there Absolutely. and a lot of greenery. And I, as you can see on the right pictures, the entrance is very elegant. Even the parking is very. You got the breeze blocks. And thank you for using the term skinny. And my emerging yeah. generations knows yeah. how to recognize that because we're developing skinny's towers right now and at our place. Let's move on to we because so far we had talked about typological innovations. Mm -hmm. Now we want to talk about technological innovations. And can we get the next picture for that one? And this is me taking a picture of you on the left side pointing out what you had developed. Also on the right is a sketch you had with you at the talk story that I took a picture. And the bottom right is uh, the name of one of the buildings you were basically applying that technology to. So what, what did you do, Peter? This building is actually, we're using the concrete block, which is on the table. And uh, they yeah. call it double I. Double I. There's a groove on either side. You can put the temperature steel. And the vertical steel, you can just plant it in. Because the cell, it's uh, small, all you need is peak gravel, you put it inside, and put the gravel down and pull it out. So the whole thing, instead of eight inches wide, can be just six inches. Mm -hmm. And it's much stronger than regular. Mm -hmm. The whole top and bottom is grind smooth. So when you put epoxy, two bead on epoxy, like this, like a toothpaste. Absolutely. In, in one hour, the whole thing is adhered into one unit. Absolutely. So very efficient way to put up something. What a great uh, engineering mm -hmm. innovation. Mm -hmm. And so is the next one, if you can get the next picture. You're also cultivating something that you call tilled up. And this article, we also have to give credits to, um, <clears throat> to basically Matt Moy, who was providing articles uh, right. from the archives about your work. Right. Uh -huh. And this is something, explain a little bit in two sentences what tilled up is, Peter. Tilled up is instead of have a concrete poured with a vertical form on both sides, that means if the wall is 28 feet, you have the wall, the plywood come down, plywood come down, and pour it inside. Mm -hmm. And uh, once when you pour the inside, it's hard because aggregate will be covered on the bottom of it and very hard to vibrate. So if we have the concrete floor uh, on the outside, why can't we put a bound breaker on the ground and pour it four inches curb, pour the slab on the ground mm -hmm. and just lift it up. Mm -hmm. It's much faster. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, Every concrete wall can be poured on the ground. Each one just keep on 
and lift it up like a tilt up. Yeah. And then you pour concrete pilaster, which is kaolium, yeah. and block them together. Mm -hmm. All the reinforcing steel mm -hmm. will be yeah. mashed together. The whole thing becomes one entity. Yeah. It's an easy way to construct and mm -hmm. very fast. And in the best tradition of Hawaiians who have always shared their best things, tracing way back, you also exported that technology all the way back to another thing we shared to Nebraska, right? We did on Nebraska, we did Lincoln, Nebraska, mm -hmm. and Peoria, Illinois. We did on the different six different mm -hmm. places, yeah. Philadelphia also. Yeah, and including also, of course, we benefited from that here. Next picture, this is a project in Hawaii Kai. You applied that technology too, right? Yes, Hawaii Kai is Hawaii National Bank at Hawaii Kai. The two-story building, instead of pour concrete vertically, I actually poured all the things, which is column, mm -hmm. right on the ground, mm -hmm. which is bond breaker. So in, in two days, the whole concrete can be tilled up mm -hmm. and then tack welded together, mm -hmm. become one entity. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing come up in two weeks time, the whole building. Mm -hmm. So very fast, mm -hmm. easy way to construct and very strong. Yeah, mm -hmm. and as this uh, little uh, extract of an article that Matt found also points out, sort of the, in the Da Vinci way, the very comprehensive and holistic way you're thinking, the article says precast concrete load bearing columns that act as sunscreens. So the environmental aspect is inherently included in your designs, right? Right, because the sun, sunshade, just like a sunshade, vertical sunshade. Mm -hmm. So when the afternoon sun, we're not able to we're sort of diffuse the sunshine. So yeah. that's yeah. a serve to both purposes. But it, once again, unlike today, we're like add on something and it causes extra costs here. It's almost a, a, a side effect of your engineering. It's a part of organic way of treating the, the sun problems. Absolutely. Yeah, uh -huh. So you've worked with almost all materials. You have done steel, you've done concrete, uh, you've done concrete block. But this island has a lot of trees. So it would surprise if Peter wouldn't have a, made a project out of wood. And if we can get the next picture, and, and poor DeSoto Brown uh, went through the extra effort to look for it because he didn't want to believe that it's not around anymore, but it's unfortunately the case. But we found this beautiful model that you mm -hmm. might remember mm -hmm. of it in this article that Matt found. So explain mm -hmm. us uh, what the Midpack Lumber building was about. Because uh, Midpack Lumber, while it's lying, they're selling the lumber and plywood. Mm -hmm. I thought instead of using the regular concrete, why can't we using the plywood for the roof. Mm -hmm. Because the plywood itself is the same. You can have three layers, five layers, and seven. Mm -hmm. So I picked the three layers one and able to fold it. Yeah. So it become airplane wing. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing can be long span and very skinny in the middle. And uh, the whole thing is have a long span. Yeah. So that's the reason we designed such a way look like an airplane wing. Absolutely. Yeah. So a nice wooden lattice screen and sunshade in For front of sunshade, it. For the sunshade, that's correct. Uh -huh. So very nice. So the mid-century modern, and you also kindly uh, sort of credit the, the European modernism tradition, right? right? As an inspiration for your work. That's right. I like the Bauhaus, you know, the 1900, and uh, afterwards becomes so elegantly, uh, instead of very ornate mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. I like the Bauhaus uh, approach. It's mm -hmm. really very mm -hmm. interesting. And because of that, I allow myself to show you in the three next slides how much I can relate to you and how much you're an mm -hmm. inspiration and, and hero for me, Peter. And the next image is a school we did some years ago, which I share with you. Mm -hmm. You see a similar lettuce here on the top right. Yes, but what I also share with you is tragically that the left part of the image here has been destroyed by the client. Oh, so we wow. share the same thing. Our wood projects are the most endangered. Mm -hmm. Next project is the first kindergarten we designed where we basically epoxied a brick a skin. Mm -hmm. So once again, here we are oh, sharing yeah. more things. And last but not at all least, the, last, the next picture is a project we develop here, which is called Primitiva, which is once again inspired by your skinny towers. This mm -hmm. is a skinny tower, mm -hmm. which is bare to the bones, concrete construction, 
and it is an extruded donut, so it has a hollow core that we sort of, you know, know from your gold bond building. Very elegant. They put up the towers. Very beautiful. Right. Uh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. we, we appreciate it. So, so once again, uh, Peter, I, I can't uh, thank you enough for being such an inspiration, and it's so refreshing to see you know, the tradition of pioneering you brought mm -hmm. to this island here. And um, since I promised you uh, a goodie at the end of the show, uh -huh. if we can bring up that next picture, because this is truly demonstrating how timeless and uh -huh. always and forever your work will be, mm -hmm. because DeSoto and I and Kurt Sandburn mm -hmm. have gotten interested in looking at the original Hawaii 5.0, right. uh -huh. and we're going to rewatch them again. So um, this is one, this is actually the very beginning. Mm -hmm. This is season one, episode one, where you see McGarrett in his yes, Mercury yeah. mm -hmm. cruising down uh -huh. at Chinatown. And you see the same situation that we've been shown at the beginning of the show. And here you see your column, surprise, surprise, before it was painted red. And this is the original marble. Marble chips. Marble chips. Right, and right, and so right. uh, the producers of the show particularly mm -hmm. used architecture mm -hmm. that they thought was most representative of mm -hmm. what Honolulu was at that time, was right. a growing boom town, a metropolis, right? Right, right, right? And a blend of cultures. Mm -hmm. Uh, you so perfectly portray with mm -hmm. your work. So um, thank you very much. Once again, Peter, I can't thank you enough for having been here. And uh, thank you so much. This we, is really a pleasure to we, get together with this. Is wonderful. No, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And thank you again for mm -hmm. being the inspiration. And you guys hopefully be with us next week with DeSoto again. Uh, our topic will be uh, something from the same time, but unfortunately mm -hmm. entirely torn down. We call the show Makaha Magic. It's about the Makaha Resort uh, uh, way out west, and we have been mm -hmm. sort of detectives and uh, archaeologists about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So look forward uh, to that, and until then, please stay uh, exotic entrepreneurs just like Peter. Bye-bye. <laughs>